Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you just perfectly fine. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hey, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Are you in Budapest right now? Yeah, I'm in Budapest. Uh, thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. That's really great Thank of you. Thank you for asking me. I'm so happy, yeah. Well, we're happy to be uh, uh, hosting the film here in Edmonton as part of the Edmonton International Film Festival. Maybe you can provide an overview of uh, what Four Souls of Coyote is about. So this is about uh, saving the creation. And uh, the story goes back to the beginning of the creation as the native people seen it. And there is a frame story in the present times when it's in danger and uh, we, I wanted to show that we can ruin everything which was built in, 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 in uh, the, during the evolution and the history and, and it's in danger. That's all basically. Just uh, yeah. scrolling back to the, the incipient stages of getting the idea for Four Souls of Coyote, why were you, a, a European, inspired to tell the myths of indigenous Americans? Okay, so I, I got this question many times, and uh, I thought I, you I had. Think there is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's of course. Uh, so first of all, we behind the Iron Curtain. I was uh, growing up in the seventies, eighties. Yeah, and it was really popular uh, to read stories about uh, Native Americans, and most of them was unauthentic. Yeah. So we were well aware that it wasn't authentic, but somehow people really resonated because uh, we were under uh, Russian invasion and Hungary was always, we have a different language from our neighbors and uh, we were also not Christian when we arrived to Europe in the yeah. past. And horse riding, arrow shooting, yurts. So somehow Hungarians still uh, keep their own shamanic old religion. And there is a lot of similarities and, and we, somehow always resonated with uh, the American natives, how they try to keep their identity. So there, that was always in the air. And when I was, uh, I wanted to make first short tales, but in a, in, a, in a news at that time, we saw Standing Rock happening with a pipeline through the, through the reservation. Mm -hmm. And everybody was protesting against the pipeline and it was in the news and and it was like all nations somehow reacted on that so it was a cry for help that this is still happening to us our lost land is attacked and please help and a lot of people from from all around the world somehow joined tried to show their support and that was really touching us and somehow i thought this is this is the the, the way I can somehow connect and I know I'm Hungarian, but still I, I wanted to participate and at least show the world uh, to Hungarian audience that this is happening and tell this story somehow. Well, the way you know how as an animator and as a director, a film director, and what a, what a splendidly beautiful film it is, too. Beautiful and heart-wrenching in the same breath. It's a feature-length animated film, A Labor of Love, involving 2D renderings by hand and 3D elements added to allow for the perception of movement, from what I understand. Uh, and that is really labor-intensive. How long were you working on this picture? First of all, we, we got uh, only m money for developing the, the script. Yeah. And I had a friend who is a, a script writer. I was the one who brought the, the, the idea of a creation myth. And we worked one year together. And after that, we couldn't uh, start doing the film because no one wanted to support this in Hungary. They said, why should we support a story which is not our own? So we struggled. We went also. We went to Canada once, uh, but we couldn't succeed to find uh, uh, finance. Mm -hmm. We went to France, but finally in Hungary, somehow they saw that we keep coming back and and we still developing. Somehow we 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 managed to 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 find a founding in Hungary. Well, thanks for your dogged persistence in getting this film made. And it's funny that it circles back to Canada because one of the voice actors in the film happens to be Lauren Cardinal, and uh, he wasn't raised far from where I am at this very moment. How did the cast shape the telling of these stories? First of all, we, we had Hungarian cast. 
uh, because we had to make it was in a contract to make it in Hungarian. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, during the process, uh, we of course we realized that no one understands Hungarian, and we definitely have to make an English dubbing. But it was impossible to do it here. Yeah. So uh, we had a partner in Los Angeles, a dubbing company, and they worked with us. And I I wanted uh, native actors to be involved because I'm well aware that we are not. So somehow. Uh, to involve them, and I, I was really happy with uh, Lauren's uh, voice. He was really fitting to the to the main creator. And music plays an integral part, not only in the culture of indigenous America, but also in your film. And uh, there's a spiritual influence, uh, somebody who is kind of a mentor, from what I understand, um, who who's a folk singer based in Hungary. Chet Tomás. He was like Bob Dylan, okay. one guitar, one guy singing. He started a little camp in a forest in the 60s. It was like resistance against the communist regime. Uh -huh. And they wanted to play like fair rules and, and going back in a, in, a, in a world where it's not so corrupt like the, his society at that time. And they uh, had fantasy kind of uh, like going back to the the wild west uh -huh, yeah that's interesting that was the, the the rules are straight you know and uh, uh he started collecting a lot of native american and the wild west stories so he was a main character in hungary who had knowledge about native culture behind the iron curtain yeah. And you were influenced by him in telling these stories. Well, uh, thanks so much for uh, creating such a, a gorgeous uh, film and provocative film as well for Souls of Coyote. Um, I know music was an influence, and I'll wrap up our interview, Aaron, by asking you, I can play a musical request for you. Is there anything you'd like to hear? Oh, my God. I really like Tom Waits. Okay, you're on. What would you like to hear from Tom Waits? Like green grass? Let's go for that. <laughs> okay. Keep well, and I wish you every success in future endeavors as well. Thank you very much.